come to live because I have not been able to do a video. I've been so busy in my workshop and so I just wanted to go live and show you, hopefully I don't lose connection, what I am working on in the garage. I told you in my update, I posted on my community tab that I am building a closet organizer. It's taken me a year and a half. It's so embarrassing to say that, but it's taken me a year and a half because I started back in November of 2019 and I thought that I was gonna get it done in a week before I went to Brazil, but it didn't happen. So today I just wanted to give you a quick update, kind of show you where I'm at and just show you some of the new tools that I'm using back in December, you know, it was my birthday and I said, uh, I am just gonna buy all new tools. Hey Patricia, what's up? No. What's up? Oh, I'm, I can't talk to her right now. I'm on YouTube. <laughs> I'm live. Hey, Zizi. Hey, Kenya. Oh, gosh. I hope my connection's not bad. Can you see me? This is why I don't go live, because my connection is, like, horrible in the house. But anyway, I started this closet makeover in November 2019, and it just didn't get done. I removed the wallpaper. Um, but now I am actually making progress, and I wanted to show you where I am so that you know that I'm I'm working hard for you. I'm trying to put out a new video, but it's just taking a while. Okay, so I'm gonna try to flip this around to show you what it is I'm working on. Um, Neil, I, are you able to see me? I really hope you are. Anyway, let's see. Oh, it's a little fuzzy. Okay, well good, then you can't see all my fine lines and wrinkles. <laughs> we don't want it totally crisp, do we? All right, let me see if I can switch this around. Hey, Dana, oh, thank you so much. Okay, Brazil, what's up? Brazil? I can't wait to go back to Brazil. I'm like so excited about going back and seeing my friends. So let me turn this around here. This is the closet organizer. Oh, it's, it's holding now. Okay, good. All right, so this is what I've been building. And I don't know where the plans are. I had plans that I created on SketchUp, but this is a, a whole separate piece. Hey, what's up, AH Transport? So it's taken me forever to get this piece, but this is the upper part of the cabinet and it's gonna be sitting on a set of dresser, uh, four dressers. So right now I've got adjustable shelves. You notice I've got these shelf pins here and this was very difficult to do. I'll show you how I did it. Where's the tool? You'll get to see my, oh, look at this. Guys, look at this. <laughs> this is where I have to work. In fact, let me point it out this way so you can actually see. This is how little space I have. You see this little this little area here? That's where I usually am working. And a lot of times I'm trying to film and I have to step over the cord, the tripod, and I don't have a lot of space. But let me show you some of the tools that I'm using. This is something from Craig. So if you're ever making cabinets, uh, Viscani, oh, sorry, you're, I just lost your comment. Um, but anyway, what I had to do for this is to make some shelf pins. This is actually a really good tool to use. It only costs maybe about $30. And the thing is, is that when you're doing cabinets, you have to make sure that everything's going to line up. Because if you've got one hole here and then the next hole is just a little bit down, it's going to rock. The shelf is going to rock. So I think I did a pretty good job. This tool is only maybe about 30 bucks or whatever. It's um, by Craig. And I got some shelf pins in there. And the biggest problem with doing this, guys, was trying to get these drawers in. And it's a little crooked, so I don't know if you can see this. But it's got a little bit of a reveal here. It's supposed to be one-eighth of an inch, but over here it gets a little smaller. So it's not perfect, but let me show you what it looks like. Okay, now watch. Check this out soft clothes oh my gosh it actually works <laughs> it, it literally took me all day to get this to work and you see these right here this is the discarded ones all right okay these are the ones that i totally busted up and the problem is that when i was starting this project i mean look at this look how horrible this looks <laughs> it's so bad when i was starting this project I didn't know that I was going to use undermount slides. So if you notice, let's see here, it might get a little dark here. This is undermount slides. So when you pull this out, you don't see any slides right here. And the problem is that I did not, I'll turn this around so you can see me. The problem is that when I was doing these drawers, I didn't realize I was going to use undermount slides. 
and I didn't measure properly. So I had spent all day building these drawers only to find out that it was three eighths of an inch too small. And I was a good, you know, and I was actually just going to stick it on there and just force it closed. But I didn't really want to do that because not that I'm a perfectionist, but I felt like I had enough skill to remake this and it wouldn't be as, you know, wouldn't be as slow. I knew what I did wrong. So I just wanted to do it over again. And I'm glad that I spent the time doing it. Um, so yeah, so those, those are two soft clothes. And again, this whole unit is going to sit on top of, let's see here. Let me put these down here so you can see. It's going to sit on top of a three or four drawer uh, dresser that I made. All right, so you'll see this part here. I'll actually take this off. I'm going to show you these tools that I've been using too. Okay, so this is going to be the little piece that just finishes off that edge. But one of the things I wanted to point out to you is I, I updated a lot of my tools, right? Like back November, December, I just decided I wanted to get some more professional woodworking tools. And I really struggled with it because they're expensive. If you know anything about power tools, this line of tools, it's called Festool. They're not sponsoring this or anything. I'm literally just showing you, you know, what I'm using now. But when I did the last organizer, you can see that on my channel, it was very difficult to get consistent cuts. So I would cut one piece of wood and it would be like 40 inches. And then I'd cut the next one, it'd be like 41 and like 1 16th or 1 8th. And it just was so frustrating because things weren't lining up. And so somebody had said, well, Serena, you need to get a track saw. And that's what I did. Now you don't have to get a an expensive track saw, like Festool is sort of like the BMW of tools. But Makita actually makes one that's a little bit more um, less expensive. And what I like about it is that the track saw actually rides on this track. So, and it's got a hose too, which actually is attached to something else, I'll show you. But I've been able to get consistent, yes, yes, Neil said Festool is a lot of money, but they're nice to work. They are nice to work with. They really are. I mean, you can see I still have a lot of my Ryobi tools over here. I've got some uh, Milwaukee. I've got some rigid tools over here too. And some of those, I mean, a lot of these tools were given to me by uh, some of the, the blogger stuff that I've done for Home Depot and Ryobi and all those people. But these are ones that I specifically bought myself because I wanted to get just better cuts, you know? So I just kind of bought into the whole system and it's been working really well. So if you guys are into woodworking, if you want to do projects, look into the Makita track saw. It's less expensive and I think it's just as good. Some people actually prefer it. Um, and you'll be able to get repeatable cuts so that if you're trying to make something like this, you're not as frustrated because you get nice clean cuts. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but with the track saw, you get really smooth cuts. Like there's not even any splinters. And that's one thing that I absolutely love. Um, another thing too, like in the workshop that you need to think about is a dust extractor. <laughs> I can't tell you how much dust is created by trying to cut all these pieces of wood. And this is not a big space. Let me turn this around. This is not a big space, so I don't have, um, you know, a lot of ventilation or anything like that. There's just dust everywhere. So when I upgraded to the Festool, I was able to get the the dust extractor. So a lot of the dust, I mean, it's not 100% uh, dust free in here, but a lot of it is sucked up. And I still wear a mask because I don't have a filtration system in here, but a lot of it is already captured into the dust extraction. So that's something to think about too. Like if you're just getting into projects, um, you got to think about your lungs and you don't want to clean all this dust up. So that's one tool that I would definitely recommend uh, is a track saw. It doesn't have to be Festool. This is a tool. This is like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't even tell you how much I love this tool. This is called a domino. And it's, yeah, again, it's part of the Festool line. It's very expensive, but it's sort of like a biscuit. If you've ever had a biscuit joiner, it's very similar. In fact, I'll show you what it looks like when it cuts. All right, so it actually makes these holes here for you to put these little floating mortise, uh, floating tenons into. So let's see if I can do it. Here's one. All right, so when you're trying to put wood together, you have to join it in some kind of way, right? A lot of times people, woodworkers, will use 
Um, you'll see a lot of DIYers use uh, the Craig Jig, and it works. Craig Jig works. I've used it for myself for a number of projects. But with the last closet makeover that I did, putting that together with the with the pocket holes, you then have to plug them up. <laughs> I mean, you can put them in locations where you, you can't see the pocket holes, but you have to plug them up. And so afterwards, um, hey, Eddie, is it? No, Edie, Edie. Hey, Edie, what's up, girl? Um, I'm sorry, I just saw your comment pop up. But with the pocket holes, you gotta fill them. And it just got to be where I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna get a domino. I'm buying into the festival line, let me get a domino. It's expensive, they're like $1,000. Um, but it was a birthday gift to myself and I plan on doing a lot more building. So, you know, I'm very cheap when it comes to like furniture, but I'm kind of a tool snob when it comes to that. So what I like about this is that I can do, oh, hopefully this thing, I don't have like a tripod to hold my phone, uh, but this little two piece part or two inch part is going to cover up this edge of the drawer or the, the shelf. And if you see, it's, it's going to go right into that hole. And let's see if I can get it in there one-handed. I probably, oh, there we go. All right, so then it goes right in there and it's, it gives you a nice clean. And of course you have to, you know, put some glue and all that, but I like it. I like it. It's, it's, that's part of what's been taking me a long time is to figure out how to use these tools. Um, another thing is the hose can be attached to all the tools. So the dust extraction is really kind of an essential part. Um, but yeah, those those were my failed attempts at drawers. <laughs> so the other day, I, I ended up just going back to the store, and I was like, "All right, I'm I'm not gonna shove these drawers in here. I'm just gonna go to the store, get more material. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna make new drawers, and I'm glad that I did." So, what else do I have to do? I should take you upstairs. Well, if you look on my page, if you go to thrift diving uh, on the community tab, you should be able to see the. Uh, I think I put a picture of the four drawers. Let me tell you, those drawers don't completely fit either. And the reason why, again, is because they're a little too small. I went ahead and just shoved them in there because I don't want to make four big drawers. I just don't want to do it. But part of it is because when I was using SketchUp, I had put the wrong measurements into the program. <laughs> so when I went to put it on there, I'm like, oh man, it's like three eighths of an inch. And I should have learned for the smaller the smaller drawers. Um, but anyway, this is to let you know that DIY is not perfect. It's slow, especially if you've never done a project before. And I don't know if you guys know, but I, I started a podcast back in January. So I published, I've been doing that every week, not putting videos out, but I've been doing uh, some of those every week. And the thing that I'm talking about tomorrow is like 10 tips on what to do if you have never done a project before. Like, how do you tackle that? And some of the things that I talk about, and tell me guys, if this is a, prob a problem for you, like if you've never done a project before, how do you actually navigate that? How do you get started and get over the fear of, can I do this? Is it going to work? And this is something that I, sh that I really struggled with. I think this is why it's taken me so long to get this project done because I've been so afraid that I'm going to waste money and ruin my my wood that I was afraid to even like start. And then when I started, I was afraid to do the other side. So that's why it's been taking me so long, but I've been doing research. But anyway, if you guys have not listened to my podcast, there's a lot of good stuff that I'm talking about on there. Um, some interviews I've done with people and just talking about like painting furniture. We're talking about like maintaining your home. And if you just go to like Amazon, Google, any of those places, just search for thrift diving and you'll see thrift diving uh, podcast come up. But yeah, every Friday, every Friday around 11 or 12 Eastern time is when I publish. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can tell you about this project. Let me turn it around so you can see. Oh, so the only thing that I have left to do now, these are all cut and I just have to pull out the domino. I wish I could do a demonstration for you, but again i need to i need to get a uh something to hold the camera i don't have a tripod for this camera um oh my gosh thank you that's so nice of you oh my son is listening he's watching too hey sweetheart <laughs> um so yeah this is what i'm going to be doing tonight i was so tired i just took my son to play basketball and i'm exhausted oh my gosh guys whoever lives here in like the maryland dc east coast 
we are being bombarded with cicadas right now. I cannot tell you how disgusting these things are. So that's another thing that slowed me down too because I can't, I don't have a lot of space here. For those of you that didn't see, I'm gonna show you how little space I have. But I've been trying to work out in the, in the driveway and I can't do it because there's bugs everywhere. Oh, you like the cicadas? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't like them. I like the way they sound. I think it's kind of cool. And I like the concept, but the actual bug invasion, yeah, that's that's very frightening. Um, but you see here, it's just, it's chaotic here in my workshop, and I don't have a lot of space. And I think you guys may have seen that I'm, I'm in the process of trying to get um, a huge shed in my backyard. I decided um, they're not really scary. The cicadas are not scary. You know what it is? I don't like when the little wings just zzz. So the other day, let me tell you a funny story. The other day, it was a little chillier here. Today it's 90 degrees, but it was a little um, a little chillier out. And so in the backyard, of course, there's a lot of cicadas. And I was afraid to open up the door to check to see how cold it was. So I, I mustered up my courage and cracked the door open. I'm looking. Oh, wing ding. Oh, that's so cool. Hey, Ohaney's friend. So I'm looking. I'm checking to see if there's cicadas. I didn't see anything on the door. I literally opened the door, stuck my head out, and a freaking cicada fell on my head. <laughs> now, thankfully, with this bushy hair, I didn't have, you know, my hair out. Thank God it would have gotten, like, stuck. Um, <laughs> but, yes, it was it was crazy. So I'm in the kitchen, like, ah, you know, going like this with my hair. My husband's looking at me like, oh, come on. The kids are like, Mommy, what are you... Like, come on, it's not that big of a deal. But I thought it was so hilarious. Oh, uh, Mama, ooh, your comment just disappeared. Oh, there it is. Uh, the organizer is really nice. The cicadas are just disgusting. Yes, they do look like horseflies. Um, I don't know if you guys follow me. If you go to, you can see the cicada pictures I've been posting. Go to uh, thrift. No, no, no. Look for Serena McCann Apia. It's on my personal page on Facebook. And I've been posting cicada pictures. It's traumatizing. I was 26 the last time they came out. They only come out every 17 years. I'll be 60 when they come out again, <laughs> which is too soon if you ask me. Um, but anyway, let me see if there's anything else that I can tell you about this project. Actually, let me ask you guys, what are you working on right now? Like, do you have any questions about something that you are working on? A project that you're trying to do? Is there a project that you have been wanting to do, but you're a little afraid to start it, to tackle it? Um, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it because I, I know for myself, there's there's not too many projects that I'm afraid to try. Um, I will eventually muster the courage <laughs> to try a project, um, but there are some, there are some real challenges with doing projects. And oh, watch High said making a sofa. Oh yes, you mean making a sofa from scratch, or do you mean reupholstering a sofa? There's a big difference there. Although making a sofa, I don't know, that'd be a hard one. <laughs> Um, finishing your DIY bathroom. So what is it that you need to do in your bathroom? What are you trying to do in there? Um, I know one of the projects that I would love to to do would be to like take out the shower that I did. You know, I painted a shower, I guess it was about four and a half years ago. It's still holding up, by the way. Um, oh, insulating your crawl space. Yeah, that seems like that would be kind of difficult. But uh, if you have done some research on it, I'm sure it's not too difficult. Um, Helen says, what are they? Never heard of them in UK. Cicadas. They are these uh, cicadas. They come out this particular brood 10. They only come out once every 17 years. These particular, this particular brood of cicadas. You know what? I should. Oh my gosh, I'm kind of scared. I was going to open my garage door and see if I could find one. Do you guys want to see a cicada? <laughs> when I come in here to work, I'm so afraid to open this garage door because if they're on the garage door, let me turn this around. If they're on the garage door, you see this, I have a screen here, right? So what happens is this, this garage door comes up and then I can pull this screen down. It's really cool. I, I installed it maybe last year or something like that. Uh, but the thing is, is you have to make sure there's no cicadas on your garage door. Cause if you open it up, then they're going to, they're going to be in your garage. You're going to be trapping them inside and that's not going to happen. So let's see if we can, let's see if we can see a cicada. <laughs> Building an ultra light that I got for free, I'm probably gonna bail on it. Uh, I don't know what an ultra light is. What is that? 
craft room storage. Now, are you building that from scratch? Okay, let's see. Go out another way. Yes, we're gonna go out this way. Oh my gosh, I'm scared, guys. Okay, I'm gonna turn you around here. Hold on. Okay, the first thing I do, wait a minute. The first thing that I do is I look, I check to make sure there's nothing here. If I drop my phone, you're gonna know what happened. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. All right. So I don't know if you can see, sometimes it, it gets a little spotty out here. Uh, oh gosh, what is over here? Oh, oh my God, there's one. Okay, here we go. If I get too close, this thing's gonna jump and then I'm gonna like scream. Can you guys see that? And I know he sees me, they have five eyes. Yeah, so that's just one. And what happens is they end up shedding their skin. They have these exoskeletons, right? So this is just the shell. But you can hear them. Oh gosh, Whew. I don't like to be out here. <laughs> Wait, let's check on the garage door and see if there's any. Let's see. Okay, we're good. This is actually a project that I was supposed to do. I, this garage door has a lot of stuff in do. Thin connection, oh, there we go. Okay, I was losing connection there for a second. Okay, we're gonna go back into the garage where it's safe. <laughs> All right. Okay, here we go. Back in the safety of the garage. Ah, here we are. So, oh, you're saying the cicadas are a, li a little different than the ones in Texas. Yeah, this, I don't know, this one only comes out once every 17 years. It's crazy. Let's see if I can prop you up here. Ah, there we go. Hey. All right, I'll have to lean down here because I'm kind of tall. I'm like five foot ten, and this is a little short. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I have to do. Oh, so the uh, closet organizer, I'm hoping that it's going to be done next week. Uh, there were some projects that I was supposed to do outside. You know, the garage needs to be painted. I have to patch up all of the, uh, like, the, just the dry rot around the, the base of the, the garage. But I had to email um, the sponsor who's sponsoring it. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. So you get those cicadas every year in Michigan? Oh, hell no. <laughs> I, I couldn't. I mean, we get cicadas. We hear cicadas every summer, but not like this. Like when you're driving, these cicadas will actually hit your car. Like you hit them because they're just flying everywhere. It is very annoying. Some people are just like, I like to help the cicadas get across the street. When I see them in the street, I'm walking. I'm like, no, these things are coming out by the billions. There's no way. There's no way I'm going to save them. Um, oh, thank you so much. You know, I should go live more often. I really don't. I don't know why. I think, I don't know. I think just over the years, I've just become more of a introvert, I guess. And so I, I just tend to just whatever videos I do, I just tend to have it be something that is more curated. Um, but I like doing the lives. Once I get started, it's like, yeah, this is kind of cool. Um, I should show you all the, I should show you all the tools that I bought. I just bought like, I bought a ton of Festool stuff. Like I invested a lot of money into this stuff. I wish I could do demonstrations for you and just show you how some of this stuff works. Um, I'll show you here. Actually, let me turn this around. So, okay, so I bought the table. This is uh, an MFT table, multifunction table. And what I like about it is I've got these clamps, right? So whenever, and this is something that I realized when I was working on the last closet organizer, it was very hard to cut things and not be able to clamp it. So now I've got these little clamps here and they just go inside of the holes. Let me pull this piece of wood here. It's hard to do things one handed. I really need to upgrade my phone and stuff. But when you turn this around, all you got to do is, geez, it's hard to do this one handed. Hold on guys. All right, here we go. And so it's, it gives you a pretty sturdy base when you're trying to cut. And that's what I had a, a huge problem with last time when I was trying to do the other closet organizer. Um, the dust extraction, like I said, is the biggest thing. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many times. Yeah, I know, try a tripod. I wish I could, see, I have my camera. This is my normal camera. Let me show you my normal, this is what I normally use, right? So I've got a nice camera, I've got a microphone, I've got a nice tri, well, covered in paint tripod but I don't have a tripod for my phone you know what maybe I could have 
Do you want to see a demonstration of, let me turn this around. Do you guys want to see a demonstration of the, the tools? Um, I could show you that because I actually do have to do some cutting. Um, but yeah, oh, so another thing that I have to do too is I have to put a back on this. So I'm going to put a quarter inch back on this and it's going to hopefully give it a little bit more. I mean, right now it's just in the garage, so it's a little, it's a little shaky, but the floor is not quite even. Um, hey, Nikki, what's up, girl? Yes, a, a demo. Okay, let me go see if I can get one of my sons. Okay, let me see. Hold on. And I'll show you how I use these tools. Where's Quabana? I'm live on YouTube. <laughs> hey, Quabana. Yeah. Come here. I need your help, sweetie. I need you to hold my phone. I'm live on YouTube. And I, how long? I, just maybe like five minutes. Yeah, you're going to be my tripod. <laughs> my homework. <laughs> this is my son, Quabana. It's my 14-year-old. <laughs> he's taller than me now. Okay, so he's going, you're doing your homework. Okay, so let's turn this around. All right, so you come over here. Okay. Yeah, I've got a tripod. So, so okay, so what I'm going to do is just do a little demonstration of some of the tools. This is why I definitely recommend a track saw. But again, you don't have to use Festool. Festool is, if you have the money, buy quality tools. Um, I've been using Ryobi tools for a long time. I still use, I mean, I still use the Ryobi jigsaw like whenever I need to. But for the most part, um, I've been upgrading my tools because over the years I've become like much more interested in uh, woodworking. Like I still paint for I still ugh, I can't speak. I still paint furniture and do things like that. But there's nothing else to paint in my house. Like I, I have as much furniture as I need. So I still do some projects. But now it's like I'm more interested in building and, and wanting to construct things from scratch. So I'm gonna just kind of show you how I'm cutting things now, which is a lot different than what I used to do. If you want to see what I used to do, look at the old video of the closet organizer. All right. So. Oh, so this is this is one thing I need. Once I get my workshop in the backyard, I'll be able to spread things out. Right now, I can't do that. All right, so I'm going to connect this hose. Oh, one thing, let me tell you one thing that I like about the Festool dust extractor. It actually comes with a, uh, what is this called? This is like the mobile thing. So all I have to do is push this button, and it comes on. So I don't have to go to, like, the other side of where the vacuum or where the dust extractor is and press it on which is good and the batteries are also bluetooth so whenever i turn this on it automatically will cut the cut it on cut the dust extractor on all right let me put this away okay so i'm just going to cut a piece of let's do a big piece of wood i don't think i need this okay all right so one thing i like about this is that you know, when you're building, like if you're just getting started with building, one of the problems that I always have is trying to like repeat the same cut. Like if you want a, a, a 10 inch cut, each time you have to measure 10 inches and cut, 10 inches and cut. And one thing that I love with this table is that I don't have to do that. Like I can do repeatable cuts and they're pretty accurate. So it's got a little stop here. Um, but I won't get into all the details, but I will show you how this works. All right, so I'm just going to kind of set it up here and push it against the plate here. And it's loud, so I'm just going to put on these. Do I get Sorry. some? Sorry, no. <laughs> you have to, <laughs> here, you want some? Oh, this is, another th this is another thing, guys. Whenever I'm walking through here, I feel like I have to, like I'm always shimmying, you know? It's like I have to do this, and then I have to like do this and step over this. Here. There you go. All right. And I should have a dust mask on, but, oh, one thing I'll show you is that you'll notice um, because these batteries are Bluetooth, it's connected to the dust extractor. So whenever I turn it on, it automatically cuts on the dust extractor, which is amazing. Because before you had to, like, stop, clean everything up. Okay, so anyway, all I have to do is just literally cut it. Like look at this. There's like, there's like no splinters. It's, it's very smooth, and 
once you make one cut, you can actually make the same cut over and over and over. And that's what I did when I was doing these pieces. So these, these all had to be like two inches each. I mean, just imagine having to keep measuring two inches by 16, two inches by 16. It becomes tedious. So, you know, when you have the right tools and the right gadgets, you don't necessarily have to keep doing the same cut over and over um, and taking measurements. That's where, that's when you start noticing that like all your measurements are off. Um, and then I'll show you the domino. I love the domino. Okay, so have you guys ever used a biscuit joiner? So usually with woodworking, uh, a lot of times you'll see people do the Craig pocket hole or they'll do like a biscuit joiner. Um, and those look like little footballs or little wooden pieces and you know, you'll see it maybe right here. Like if you're making a table or something, you'll see some biscuits here and you can put two pieces of wood together. The little, um, like the little chips? It looks kind of like that. Um, but these chips, let me show you. This is what the, I'll get these. This is what the Festool tenons look like. So what happens is once you create this, and I'll, I'll do it in this board, then you just stick these in here. But I'll do a little, I'll do a sample. All right, so I'm going to, um, let's see. There's two ways we can do this. Let's do it, let's do it this way. Oh, this is another thing I like about this table too. And I trust, I mean, trust me guys, I'm not trying to sell you on this table. This is not sponsored. This is just what I have been using over the last couple months or so, last few months. Um, what I like about this table is that I can also plant my wood in this direction. And this is one thing I wasn't able to do the last time that I was working on my other closet organizer. So now, you know, if I need to sand or whatever I need to do, I can do it this way. Um, let me connect my hose. Did I set this? Yeah. All right. So this cool, this, this is a really cool tool. And they actually, this is the 500, but they actually make one that's like XL. So if you do um, tables or like big cabinets or like furniture that's heavy duty, they have one that's even bigger than this. I don't have that one because I don't think I'll be doing that kind of furniture. All right, so I can turn it on. And it has, a, let me turn that off for a second. It has a little bit that comes out and it wiggles like this and it'll create these holes. I'm like, can you get in to see this? are 6.30. Time for the news. <laughs> yes, I'm such a nerd. I have an alarm on my phone that tells me it's time for the news. All right, so if you can see this, can you see this one though? All right, so then you've got these little um, holes here, and then all you have to do is put your, your little tenon in there. And then ideally, you set it up properly so that whatever wood you're joining together it'll fit together. Where's that little sample that I did? Actually, you know what? I can use this one. Let's use this. All right, so here's an example of the shelf that I'm doing. So you see I've got one, two, three. And the main thing when you're using this is you have to make sure that the holes that you cut actually line up together. So then, well, it can be in this side or that side. And then all you do is just fit it together. Now, normally it's not going to fit together so easily, so usually I'll just sort of you know, take a mallet and bang it. These are just little testers that I have to make sure that it fits. And you glue it, and then you can't even see, you know, there's no pocket holes, there's no uh, joinery that's exposed. So, you know, mostly everybody is, most people, let's put it this way, most people are not gonna get a domino if you were just doing like an occasional project or whatever. But because I love woodworking so much, like I really wanted to invest in good tools. Um, and I've been struggling a little bit because I was like, how am I going to show people what I do if they don't have these tools? It's been five um, minutes. It's been five minutes. 
You have homework to get back to, right? Extremely okay. important uh, <laughs> studies. He's got, he's got extremely important studies to do. <laughs> but that was one thing that I struggled with, um, with getting these tools. I was like, <laughs> bye, sweetheart. Be careful. See, everybody's tripping over things. But that's where I was struggling with buying these tools. I was like, you know, I'm really, I'm really into woodworking. I want to learn. I want to be able to, to make more furniture for my house and stuff. But most people aren't going to have these tools. So how do I do tutorials with tools that people aren't probably going to have? So I'm, when I'm doing my videos, I'm, I'm trying to still include other methods that people can use to do things. Because I still love the jigsaw. I still think that the Craig jig, pocket hole jig is, is wonderful. Everybody uses it um, and it has its place, but I just wanted to upgrade a little. So that's all I have for you guys. Um, but I, like I said, I will tell you, um, he's got a girlfriend. No, he doesn't have a girlfriend yet. Uh, I think it's impossible to have girlfriends when, <laughs> when you, you know, the kids have been home for a year. Like, do they even have social skills anymore? I don't even know. Um, I'm actually making them go to summer school this year, and I'm like, honestly, I don't care if you even have, like, a, um, a course where they're just teaching you everything you learned two two weeks ago, or two months ago. Just get out of my house. You need to go and, and be with people again. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just wanted to remind you guys, check out the check out the podcast. There's a lot of good stuff that I'm talking about in the podcast. We talk about bed bugs. I think you guys may have seen that one. We talk about mold. There's a guy that I talked to last week about mold and is your house making you sick? Um, so there's just a lot of good conversations. Um, Edie said, when did they get out of school? They actually only have like three weeks left of school. And then they'll have, I want to say, probably two or three weeks and then summer school starts. Oh, you like the podcast. Thank you so much. I, you know, I've been surprised that I've actually been sticking with them every week because, I, you know, my channel is hit and miss. I mean... I, I only post a video when I have something to post, which because this project has been a beast, I've not had anything to post. But the podcast, I'm, I'm trying to stay regular with it. So I just recorded one today and I'm actually talking about, you know, how do you get started with uh, projects if you've never done one before? How do you get over that hump and what are the things, the lessons and the tips that you need to know to, to get started? So that's the podcast for tomorrow. Um, and then next week, we're actually going to be talking about upcycling. I say we, but me and you, <laughs> we're going to talk about upcycling and what are those questions that people need to ask themselves before they upcycle. A lot of times people say that they're not creative, and I don't believe that. I think everybody is creative. But when it comes to, like, upcycling, a lot of times people... Oh my gosh, sorry, <laughs> the bed bugs one had me itching listening. Oh, if wait a minute, if you listen to that podcast, oh, you have to go and watch the video. I actually uploaded it to uh, my channel. Uh, if you see the bed bug footage, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Don't don't watch it before you go to bed. Uh, Nikki, uh, Nikki says her only grandchild graduated from high school on Monday. Oh, that's so sweet. Did you cry? I always cry at graduations. It's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like it's the closing of one door and there's so many um, more doors that are going to be opening. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so upcycling. So next week, we are going to be talking about like, what are the 10 questions that you have to ask yourself before you upcycle? And if you are somebody who, who thinks like, I can never come up with good ideas, um, I think you're going to come up with some good ideas if you if you listen to these questions because it's really about just thinking outside of the box with things. Um, and I feel like I I have not really upcycled anything in a long time. I think, you know, when we bought this house, it was 10 years ago. We didn't have any furniture, right? Oh, thank you, Gumba. We didn't have any furniture, so a lot of the stuff that I was doing on my channel and my blog, I was going to the thrift store. I was finding old furniture and decorating, but there comes a point when your house is full, like you have no more space. And if you bring something in, you got to get rid of something, right? So I've not been going to the thrift stores like I used to. And now like I'll see something good at the thrift store and I just, I'm like, nope, can't bring it home. I don't, I don't have any space. Um, let me turn this around because I actually do have some, let's see, I don't know. I do, um, let me go over here and show, first of all, <laughs> For those of you that didn't see, this is what my garage looks like. This is why I'm getting a shed in my backyard because there is absolutely no space here. 
And when I go through here, here's what I have to do. Check this out. Step, hold, so you don't fall. Step, hold. You see, I've got these huge doors here. This is for my shed. Um, the project that I would like to do are these metal cabinets. I got them from, a, I don't know if you can see, I got them from an estate, not an estate sale, an auction. These cool metal cabinets. And I think it's going to make an awesome desk. But it's got a lot of rust on it. So I'm planning to probably strip those and maybe bring them, bring them back to their natural metal. Um, or maybe I'll spray paint them like a fun color. I'm thinking maybe I'll put that in the shed. Um, but it's hard. It's hard when, when you don't have a need for any projects anymore um, in terms of furniture. But it's like, this is, this is what I do. I, I do furniture makeovers. I love this. Um, so what do you guys do? When, um, do you, like, how, how are you guys doing? Are you, is your house totally full? And what do you do when you want to be creative, but you don't really have a space to do like creative projects? Meaning like you can only, but you can only make so many, here we go. Put some piece of wood there. You can only do so many <laughs> like furniture makeovers before your house is full. So what do you guys do? Uh, when the house gets full garage sale. Yes. Yes. I think what I do sometimes is I, I just donate because the amount of um, moving things out. I mean, yes, it's a way to earn extra money that you didn't expect. Um, but I just I, I wonder sometimes if it's worth it with all the amount of like moving stuff out that you have to do um, or just donate it and then you know take the tax right off if you can if you can I'm trying to think of what else to show you I've got this little I've got this cool little red chair back here <laughs> you see it's like stuck underneath here look at this little red chair I've not been I, I have not had the the guts to give this away because I feel like it, it can be amazing right like it, all you have to do really is clean it I don't feel that it has to be given away, um, but I don't have anywhere to put it, and I'm afraid to, to give it up. Um, you go, girl. Power it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's all I wanted to tell you guys tonight. It, I'm, I just really wanted to check in with you. I Every time I go look at my channel, I'm telling you, if you don't post on Facebook, I'm not Facebook, um, YouTube. YouTube hates you. YouTube will, like, stop showing your videos to people and... Uh, it's, it's, yeah. So I was like, you know what, let me just check in with you guys because I don't want you to think that I just, you know, fell off the face of the earth. Um, Edie said when she donates, she doesn't take the tax break. You know, I think, um, Trump had put, uh, you know, that big tax, that big like tax overhaul that he had done. I think he changed it so that now when you do, um, your taxes, I think it's like a, the, 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 ta the standard deduction is higher than most people even itemize. So I think it may not even matter anymore. Oh, thank you, Edie. Thank you. You know, I should hire him to do the, uh, <laughs> to do the video and for me. I think after this, I will get a tripod though, but just wait until my shop comes when I get that thing installed. Oh my gosh. Have you guys ever done a permit for your County? It is difficult. It's been two months and everything that they want. It's like they want your blood, sweat, and tears before they approve you. So the guy finally just called me today. <laughs> He's like, yeah, we've kicked it back to you twice. I, d I just had to call you and figure out like, why why are you doing a concrete? This is what he told me. He said, why, why are you doing a concrete pad when you already have a base on your shed? Like, why are you doing that? You're just spending extra money. <laughs> I was like, you know what? You're, you're right. What, what do you recommend? He said, I would do concrete piers with gravel. So I think that's what I'm going to do, and it's going to save me a lot of money. Um, but I just, I want this thing now. I can't work. I can't work. I can't, I can't, like, I don't have anywhere nice to do videos. I can't video outside. Um, and I'm, I'm literally tripping over things. In fact, I have tripped over these cords many of times. You know, they're just, they're sitting right here. I trip over these cords all the time. And as heavy and solid as this is, you see this little plastic part here? That thing is very expensive and it cracked on me. I had to go buy a new one. I was so upset. Um, no, I, Nancy, I will not be building my own shed. Let me tell you, it has taken me so long to build this that <laughs> I went in the other day to my husband. I said, I don't know what I was thinking building a shed. 
because it's taken me all day to build two drawers and I messed those up and then I had to go back to the store and get more wood <laughs> to build two new drawers. So no, I will not be building a shed. Maybe at one point in my life, I'll, I'll build something much bigger. Um, but right now I just need the shed so that I can work. Um, what else was I gonna tell you guys? Oh, oh, you know what I was gonna tell you guys? Let me tell you a tool that I absolutely love. Again, this isn't sponsored by them, but this brand of tools, it's, it's um, like measuring tools, it's by Woodpecker. Guys, you have to get this tool. I don't remember how much I paid for it. Woodpecker can be a little expensive, but let me tell you, let me show, I'm gonna show you why this is an amazing tool. And I just looked at it and realized I should tell you about this. If you're doing any kind of woodworking projects, like this is the tool that you need for measuring. This, this has been a godsend. Um, let me put this little thing here. And let me tell you why I like it. So it's a um, T-square, right? So whenever you're, let's say you want to mark, let's say you want to cut this board at, I don't know, nine and three eighths. I mean, doing that on a tape measure can be a little difficult because sometimes you're like, well, where in the world is nine and three eighths? But look a little closer. I don't know if you can see this, but it actually has all the individual holes that you, here we go. It has all the individual holes that you need for any measurement. It's got, let's say nine and one eighth, nine and one fourth, nine and three eighths, but it also has the sixteenths because sometimes you need to go in between, right? So um, the thing is, is that you have to use a mechanical pencil. So sometimes, you know, I went, to, let me tell you a funny story. I went to Habitat for Humanity. I, I volunteer with them maybe once or twice a month to build. And I went there with this pencil and they laughed at me. They're like, why do you have a mechanical pencil? Like this is not a woodworking pencil. <laughs> and I'm laughing because they just looked at me like I was crazy. And here I am marking my wood and stuff. And I'm like, why do I have a mechanical pencil? And then I realized, oh, it's because I have this T-square. So let me show you how amazing this is. When you've got this butt up, you know, it's got this little lip here. So you're always gonna be able to get a nice straight line if you're using you know, a, a straight edge. But if you want nine and three eighths, all you have to do is come down here to nine and three eighths and you literally, I'm, I'm doing this one handed, so, but you literally just stick your pencil in there and just ride all the way up. Oh, see, look, it broke off. I'm trying to do this with one hand and it's not working. Here we go. Let's see if I can do it. So you literally just ride nine and three eighths. And so that easy, you've got your mark, nine and three eighths. So this tool, highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's by Woodpecker. Um, and it's pretty solid too. You know, they don't make junk. And this is also a good one too. Let me show you this one. Yeah, see I see how much I love tool. I love tools and accessories. My husband's like, what are you ordering again? Like, what did you just order? I can't help it. I'm sort of addicted to tools and accessories. <laughs> I don't buy clothing or home stuff. I buy tools. This one is really cool too. So this is like, uh, this is a little square and it's got a lip here, which is, I think it's, I want to say this side, I think this side is half an inch on the left and this side is three eighths of an inch, I believe. So they have some measurements built into it. And if you can see, it's very similar to this one. It's got the holes, but a lot of times when you just want, you know, let's say you just want to take a little bit off the edge of this board, you just stick it in there, run it along. And there you've got one eighth of an inch. You can see that, see that? So you don't have to pull out the tape measure and start measuring one eighth of an inch. Yeah, see that that's that's too much. That's too much, and that's you're not going to get an accurate uh, an accurate measurement. And that's what a lot of times people struggle with. Um, that's what I struggled with. I sometimes struggle with it, but it's easier now that I have better tools and accessories. Is how do you get how do you get even cuts and measurements? It, well, it, it comes down to the tools that you use. And so you know here at thrift diving, like we are thrifty. But when it comes to certain things, I'm not thrifty when it comes to tool. I'm not thrifty when it comes to um, tools and accessories. Uh, I've been thrifty, and you can still do a good job. But sometimes it just, you know, little tools like this takes the frustration out. I don't remember how much this costs, but it's small enough that it fits in my pocket, and I just, you know, I just stick it in there. So that's definitely a tool that I would recommend. Um, it's just like a speed square, you know. I'll show you a, a traditional speed square. Let me turn this around here. 
this is a traditional speed square. Uh, roofing square, it's also known as. And you can pick these up for like 10 bucks. Um, you know, those are good for 45 degree angles. And it's, you know, it's, it's small, but you know, if you look at the blue one up there, you can get one that comes in like a 12 inch. But that's every carpenter's, like you have to get that. Um, there's another tool I had around here, but I can't figure out where it is. Um, just a little tool. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Oh, I like this one too. Okay, so if you don't want to spend the money on the woodpeckers, okay? Again, I don't remember how much this costs. Um, oh, hi, True Justice. Thank you so much. Let me turn this around so you can see this. So this is the expensive one, but I, like I said, I do believe that it's it's worth its money and, and what it does. But here's one from Craig that I've had for a couple years. It's pretty good as well. And it has this little dial here so you can secure it. But let's say, for example, you know that you need, let's say, half an inch, right? Let's do, no, let's do an inch. All right, so you can set that right on the edge of the board, set it at an inch, lock it in place. So you can do your measurement here. So let's say you want to do one inch here, and you want to do one inch here. This tool, I want to say it might have been about 15, 16, maybe $20. So now you know that this mark and this mark is going to be the same. So this is another way to do it. I find that this is a little bit more difficult if you're trying to run a line all the way down. Now, Woodpecker, I believe, makes one very similar to this, but it has a little groove here for your pencil to rest in. This doesn't have that groove, and so it's a little bit more awkward, but it's still a good tool. So I didn't mean for this to turn into like an accessories video, <laughs> but this is one that I would definitely, definitely get. This is by Craig, and again, maybe it's $15, $20. It looks like it's got a level in there too. Uh, and clamps. Guys, one thing that I'm noticing <laughs> okay, Edie said, I can just see Serena getting all dolled up for a date night. Her earrings are T-square. <laughs> and her necklace, what did it say? Oh, shoot. The message just, just, just disappeared. Uh, clamps. Oh, my gosh, guys, you have to have a variety of clamps. Um, I realized that I don't have enough clamps. So when I was building this, there were certain parts that I needed to clamp, right? Like I could, I could clamp from here to here. You know after doing the glue and doing the the dominoes but I couldn't clamp from here to here and what I noticed I'm gonna show you let's see yeah I don't know if you can see you see that you see that gap yeah that gap is not supposed to be there and that's because I didn't have a clamp I wasn't oh I get a lot of loading during the stream okay sorry chastity but if you don't have the right clamps when you're building that's what happens. You end up with gaps. And I didn't even think about having larger clamps. Um, so that's one thing that I've learned in this. Uh, oh, thank you, Isabel. But that's one thing that, I, that I've that i learned in building. You have to have a lot of clamps. If you don't have enough clamps, your project is gonna, it's gonna show. Um, so I'm just hoping that my husband doesn't pay much attention to those, because he'll, he'll point those things out. Oh, why is that little gap there? Yeah, can you just admire the drawers? Oh, for those of you that didn't see the drawers, let me show you the drawers. Some people may have joined late. These are the drawers that it took me forever to figure out how to get them in there, and they're still not totally, it's still not totally even, but soft clothes, yes. Um, Mama B, no, that can't be fixed. It can't be fixed now, it's already dried, so. There's no way to fix it. I, I just didn't have a clamp that was going to fit that. So I just had to push it in there and just bang it down. Yes, Houdini said straps work. And I think, I think I actually have a strap that I bought. But you see those big doors back there? Where I think I put the strap? It's, it's behind those doors. The doors are just, they're too heavy um, and too tall in order for like for me to move those so I just said I I'm just not I just need to get like some bar clamps the ones that can be like connected together but again those are more more things that I didn't know that I needed but once I move into the the new workshop I'll be able to hopefully have like a wall of clamps um, I'm trying to think if there's some other things that I've learned during this project that I can tell you um oh for those of you that didn't uh, mama beanies Oh, I like that. 
Uh, yeah, for those of you that didn't hear this, this is um, another tool that I would recommend. This is for the shelf pins. So when you're putting a shelf in, and it comes with a little pin there. So as you do these six, then you can line up with the next one so it's not off. But here's the thing. These tracks, this is one thing I like about Festool. These tracks, uh, they actually make one that has holes in it. And you can buy like, um, what do you call it? It's like another accessory so that you can use your, um, your router to do those. Because that's one, that's one thing that I'd noticed that the, the holes are not that clean. Let's see if I can get close. If you notice, the holes are not very clean. Can you see that? They're not, clean. They're not as clean as if I had done them with the router, but I didn't have that tool from Festool. So you know, there's one more thing that I have to buy <laughs> from Festool. Uh, but yes, that jig worked, but it's not, it's not ideal. Um, Mama Bee's Knees, I missed your question. You asked me if I had something, I, I missed your question. Um, I should show you the other, the other tools. Let me see if I can do this here. Because I did buy a couple other Festool things. Oh, I bought the sander, but I have to tell you, I'm, I, I'm, I'm impressed with the sander's power, but I don't think I like it very much. Um, and the reason why is because when I'm sanding, it has a weird shape to it, and I feel like it gets off balance. And then it just leaves these marks in your wood, and I don't... I don't like that. So it could be user error, but is it here? Oh no, here it is. Let me bring it over here. All right, this is the, oh yeah, this is the tool. <laughs> this thing is a super router. Let me turn it around so you can see it. Don't fall over, please, don't fall over. Here we go. All right, so this is the Festool router. <laughs> I told you I splurged on a bunch of these tools. And what I like about this is that it comes with, well, no, it doesn't come with, but it has one of these, these little edge pieces. So essentially what you can do, like whenever you're making drawers, you know, a lot of times you're going to be putting in uh, a drawer bottom and you're going to route the, you're going to route it so that you can just slide in a little quarter inch piece. Well, with this, it makes it really easy to do that. Let me secure this so I can show you. I can do this one-handed. This piece has been a lifesaver. All right. I won't do a, I wish I could do a sample on this, but I don't have anybody else. So here's how it works. Let's see, my hand's in the way. Can you see that? So it'll sit here right on the edge, and then you're just running it along the edge. So if you want to do a rabbit edge, um, that's basically where you're just taking out a corner, right here, a little square. Or if you want to do, um, you know, really any kind, I mean, you can do a dado, you can do a groove, you know, a dado is going to go across the board, actually this way, and a, don't fall, and a groove is going to go this way. Um, so that piece makes it so simple. Now, if you have ever used a router, guys, it is the messiest tool. If you look at my old closet video, you'll see the routing that I had to do. And it was, the dust was everywhere. I mean, after every single route, you got to take the vacuum and shh suck it all up but this actually has the the hose attached to it so I mean it it, it sucks up like 95% of the dust so it's been a lot cleaner in here doing um, the doing all the routing and the grooves with, with that I'm trying to see if I had a sample of a router a piece of uh, wood that was routed I can't find it but yeah you can see the mess of look at this I have so much wood just discarded and you can't get rid of that Edie Blunzer. Hey, if you email that to me, I can follow you. Um, send me an email, serena at thriftdiving.com. Look at, look at all this wood over here. I just have so much wood. It's like, how do you organize this? Like, like, what do you do with this? You can't throw it away. Like, look at these pieces of wood. Look at these blocks. <laughs> Who can get rid of this, right? Like, do you guys struggle with your scrap wood too? You can't throw this away like this could be something useful <laughs> so then you end up with like all this wood over here anyway i've been talking to you guys for an hour i'm so happy to like just check in with you guys i just i'm sorry that i've been absent from my channel but oh thank you so much that's so nice of you thank you houdini 
but uh, yeah, but I just want to check in with you guys and let you know that I'm here. I really, you know, I have not disappeared. I've just, I've been, I don't want to say struggling, but I've been going through this project very carefully because I, I, I don't want to waste this wood. I'll tell you, I spent on this wood, I spent $700 on this wood. Um, yeah, good to see you too, Mama Bees, Beanies. I said I spent $700 on this wood. I think I bought 14 is it 14? Yeah, I had 14 sheets of plywood, maple plywood. And I've got two left. So I, I, I was I was pretty on target with how much wood it was gonna take to do this. But I was so afraid of having to, to ruin my wood and go back and buy new wood. So whenever I will I will leave you with this. Whenever you're doing a new project that you've never done before, plan, plan, plan. Don't be afraid to take all the time you need to do research. Don't be afraid to test everything before you try it. So you'll see that I've got, you know, these scraps of wood. I test everything out beforehand because if you if you make a mistake, then, you know, now you got to go back to the store and spend more money. And yes, you got to take your time. The the price of wood, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but the price of wood is astronomical. You used to be able to get a sheet of, like a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood for maybe about $52. Now it's like $65. So times that by 14, that's a lot of, of that's a lot of wood. It's a lot of money. Um, so whenever you're doing a project, it's okay to be afraid. It's okay to be nervous. Just do your research, take your time. If you make a mistake, curse a little bit <laughs> and then figure out what you did wrong. But here's something I will tell you too. And I've not been very good at doing this, but I'm, I'm definitely going to start it for this project. In the corporate world, there's this thing that a lot of companies do. It's called an after action report or after project report or APR, or whatever you call it. Sit down with yourself and actually ask yourself, what went well? What didn't go well? What do I need to do differently next time? Because I think a lot of a lot of the experiences, a lot of the mistakes that we make, we don't, we don't, well, I don't want to say we don't learn from them, but if we take note of it, then it's easier next time not to make those mistakes. Whoa, wait a minute, that popped on the screen. 114, what's $114? Whoa, half, oh my gosh. Okay, so that's, yeah, 114 Canadian dollars. Okay, so that's still, that's still up there. Um, Mama Bees, you said, um, oh goodness, I don't know how to bring, I feel like an old lady now. I'm like, how do you bring up these comments? <laughs> it doesn't pop up for me. Anyway, um, there's my husband telling me it's time to eat. <laughs> We're having tofu. I'm a vegetarian. Did you guys know that I don't eat meat? Haven't had meat for 21 years. Oh, and I'm doing low carb right now too. It's been amazing. I've lost nine pounds. Yeah, nine pounds. Still have a little bit more to go. Um, what was I saying? I don't remember what I was talking about. I think I was just saying that, you know, just be, um, be mindful of the, oh, the after action report. Definitely make sure that you, you sit down with yourself, keep a little notebook. I've got some notes written down of everything that I've done well with this project and everything that I, that I need to learn from. Because I didn't realize that when you do undermount drawers, whatever your dimension is, right? Like down here, these were 16 inch wide spaces. So because these were 16 inches wide, I had to make the drawer 5 eighths of an inch less. And I didn't know that going into it. So now that I know that, I'm making a note of it so that next time I do undermount drawer slides, which are amazing, by the way, I don't have to figure it out. I don't have to relearn. So keep a little library of notes of things that went well with your projects and things that you would do differently next time. Um, and that's how you learn. That's how you learn. Oh, wow, you've been a vegetarian too? No meat for four years? Awesome. My friend, she she is she was really fruits and vegetables kind of girl. Uh, but now she's doing this meat eater thing because she's trying to clean her gut and yeah she's having some like carb like issues with carbs and so she's strictly like eating meat now she's losing weight but she's eating meat it swears it's healthier for her okay anyway guys it's time for me to go and eat my tofu <laughs> it has been so much fun talking to you guys um leave a message down below anything that you want me to come back and comment on i'll try to do that I have probably about another hour, hour and a half maybe, to um, work. So stay tuned because next week I think I'm going to have this done and edited. Crossing my fingers.
All right, guys, you have a wonderful night, and I will see you in YouTube, like, next week. <laughs> All right, guys, bye.